Greetings. This is August 19th at 6 p.m. We're looking at a picture northwards uh, south of Ashcroft towards Cache Creek on the old road on the other side of the highway. Here we are looking southwards from Vedette at one of the local lakes. Now we are looking at a map from the NRC that came in 2.39 p.m. PST and it's only showing a couple of hot spots, one south of High Hem, one south of Green Lake. Going over to the Big Bar Cam, I'm seeing a few puffy clouds, a bit of blue and uh, low wind speed, I gotta verify that. Uh, this is Begbie, more puffy clouds and um, someone enjoying a ride northwards towards 100 mile house. Uh, we are now switching over to the cam at, between Sheridan and Bridge Lake. Uh, I'm seeing some of that haze in the air and this could be blowing forward from the north flank on the Elephant Hill fire. This is the NASA overview and we can see those clouds that are hanging around and that may be providing some cooling but it has been causing some problems for satellite perception a viewer kindly sent me in these images they were gathered from the VIIRS system which has been uh, dealing with cloud cover and data overload which we've discussed here these images show a greater extent of the 24-hour period and a few more in the 12-hour period. This is infrared hotspots. And we can take a look at that in Google Earth. Here we see these, this data. And it gives uh, a greater concentration in the northern flank. Uh, many of the other areas still appear the same or holding. We see some new orange in the 12 hour to 6 hour time period around High Hem and one at Highway 99. Here is a close up of this northern flank and it extends all the way to the northeast, uh, approximately a kilometer uh, southwest of Little Green Lake Road and the North Bonaparte intersection. Uh, we can see it extend to the foothill of uh, Mount Jim. Here I'm going to switch over to the radiative power map and it is showing pretty much the same data. Uh, this one is giving us areas of more intensity, uh, that green dot, and I'm always looking for anything in the red or the orange that's showing quite a lot of heat. Uh, pulling back and looking at the overall region, Again, very similar uh, output. Um, we see some south of Young Lake. That was around uh, Lunch Lake. And again, Hyheum south of that area. If we look over to the Highway 99, Highway 97, we see one uh, spot that's uh, north of Highway 99 in the lower Hat Creek region. The south looks quite good. Um, I believe uh, the Dead Man River is clear at this point, and that's great news for the Skitchison that have been looking after that region very successfully. I think the main message when you're looking at infrared and other radiative displays is that you want to get as much information from multiple sources and one of those are the official perimeter maps and you can find those in the links below. Check the TNRD site and the Caribou Regional District, also BC Wildfire for all the latest notices on where fires are. Now I'm jumping over to the Landsat images that we were taking a look at yesterday. Uh, they're very difficult to see through at this stage, um, and I'll keep watching for more updates. It gives the impression that a considerable portion is burned out, but upon closer examination, I'm noticing a lot of forestation that uh, has survived, and I just want to take a closer look at some of those areas. Here we're looking at uh, the Elephant Hill wildfire, slightly obscured by about 30% cloud cover. Uh, Clinton is on the left-hand side of center, and 
the Bonaparte is on the right hand side of center. So we're going to zoom in and we'll go back to Highway 99, Highway 97 first and kind of work our way around. Uh, here you can see right in the middle that power line. This is uh, west of Maiden Creek and I also see on the right of center Highway 97 heading north. And what I'd like to comment on is all the green that I am seeing. I realize these images are difficult to perceive through the clouds. This is towards Three Mile Lake and the Clinton area and you can see a lot of green up on the back side of the hill but there are some burns indicated going up towards Loon Lake. Here we are looking at the chasm area and patches of green do exist on that hill between uh, the chasm and Loon Lake which is at the far bottom right of the screen. Now we'll zoom closer into the Loon Lake area and you can see the north side of the lake uh, a lot of green showing up in there. I'm going to make the interpretation that's a uh, forestation uh, with some patches of what appear to be burned areas. Also south of the lake I'm noticing what appears to be some healthy forestation. We'll move a little bit further east and this is kind of looking over the Dead Man River. We'll move a bit south and zoom out and we're looking at Highway 1 Thompson River. This is the Cash Creek Hills area and extensive green throughout this both on the east and west sides and uh, north of the Cash Creek Hills. So. I'm seeing there's variation in where the fire attacked specific areas. I'm moving over to Windy now and as you can see if you don't like the wind direction just drive a couple of kilometers. It is approximately south at the Big Bar Cam at four kilometers an hour and I'm seeing a lot of velocity on ridges and around mountainous areas. In the future same sort of variation. It looks like it might get warmer on Tuesday and Monday and Tuesday up to potentially 30 degrees peak in the afternoon. Before I finish here I'd like to take a look at the radiative power over the Nazco fire and it's slowly going to roll over the lower mainland and that'll give you an indication of the size of the fire and it's stretching from Squamish down to Abbotsford. I hope this also gives you an appreciation for the task at hand and uh, the immense job that the wildfire crews are doing. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, everyone be safe. Uh, verify your positions. Check the links below and Keep your nose to the breeze.